All right, nice work. You made it to stage three of four in the series. You're making great progress. This stage is usually the most fun, at least I have the most fun with it, and one of the more challenging because you really get into the weeds of thinking through your perceived level of skills and your perceived forecasted degree of importance for each competency that will impact your career over the next one to three years. You can predict the future, right? While you might not be a fortune teller, this competency sorts activity will help you with prioritizing your strength and development areas. If you are willing to be honest about what's in front of you and how you hope to grow and advance your career. So what is a competency sort and how will this all work? In a few moments, you will get a virtual demo of the sorting process, but first, a few details about the activity. In this competency sort, you will be shown the 10 UC system-wide core competency ABCs and their definitions on two Google Sheet tabs. The first tab is your competency sort for your perceived skill level. So the way that you perceive the level of your skill. The second tab is your competency sort for your perceived level of importance for that skill. So you'll do the first sort about your perceived skill level and the second sort is going to be your perceived level of importance for those competencies. Really thinking one to three years down the road. You will sort competencies into three categories on both of those sheets. We're gonna take you through those steps, so hang with us. You will sort the competencies into three categories on the two sheets. Let's jump into the demo so you can learn how to do this in real time. Go ahead and click the card sort link in part three, section three of your development planning guide. And that's the plan section. Okay, you want to start with your skill tab, tab one. Across the top, row two, you have instructions to help you along the way. You will notice three categories, lowest, middle, highest. You will also notice the 10 system-wide core competencies in row three in those boxes and also in row seven and below near the bottom of the sheets. You can click on the competencies to get their quick definitions for a refresher around those areas at the bottom of the sheets. You might have also noticed those competency boxes floating in row three. Those are movable. So what we're gonna do, you will click and then slowly click again to drag those 10 competencies into the three categories. Sometimes when you do a quick double click, it takes you to a drawing panel. So it's a click and then another click versus click, click. <laughs> so you'll get the hang of it in short order. Now, this is a forced sort, meaning you will need to have an exact number in the three categories. Move three competencies into your lowest Move four competencies into your middle and move three competencies into your highest. Again, for this sort, we are sorting for your perceived current skill level for the 10 competencies. When thinking about your skill level for all 10 competencies, which three do you think fall into your highest skill bucket? Which four? fall into your middle skill bucket? And which three fall into your lowest skill bucket when compared to the others? Remember, this is for you, by you, so be honest. No one will see this except for you. And by grouping your competencies in this way, you will be able to start an honest and transformative conversation about development with yourself. Once you are finished with the skill sort, Jump to the importance tab for your second sort. This time it's still a forced sort, but with different categories and sorting criteria. This time you need to think about the perceived level of importance that the competency will play in your future career growth, thinking one to three years into the future as best you can. The sorting categories this time are different. They are nice to have, important, and mission critical. Okay, similar to last time, it's a forced sort. So move three competencies into the nice to have bucket, 
four competencies into the important bucket and three competencies into the mission critical bucket. All right, the next part, we're gonna tally up the results for these two sorts. Open the tally sheet linked in your development plan and make a copy or download so you can edit easily. You will set up your desktop so that you can work on two windows at once. You will want to have the card sort sheets and the tally sheet open at the same time so you can work on both of them simultaneously. First, you will go with the skill level tab and mark X under lowest, middle, and highest for each competency. Then once you're finished tallying for skill, go to your important tab and repeat this action. This time marking X under nice to have, important, and mission critical for each competency. Okay, now you have your awesome tally sheet all finished. What's next? Time to make your nine box. Okay, well, what is a nine box? The nine box model, also known as the nine box grid, is a tool used to analyze, display, and compare performance and potential. In this case, we're using it to compare your self-perceived current skill and the competencies that you will need to successfully reach your career goals. This user-friendly performance map is a talent management tool that helps HR and managers effectively identify leaders and strategically prepare employees for future roles. This time, you want to have your tally sheet open and your nine box grid open at the same time. So you can go into your development plan and open the nine box grid. You want to be able to work with both of these documents simultaneously. You will notice that the nine box has, you guessed it, nine boxes. Moving horizontally across the top, going left to right, you will notice skill level and lowest, middle, and highest categories. Headed vertically from the bottom to the top, you will notice importance in the nice to have, important, and mission critical categories. Okay, so this is just like plotting points on a graph. Don't worry, this is easy and fun to see where things land. For each competency, review the categories you chose for both your perceived skill level and your perceived level of importance, so those first and second sorts. Let's play this out with an example. Let's say for change agility, you placed the competency in the highest skill category and the mission critical category for importance. Where do you think that competency should be placed in your nine box? Hmm, let's see. Ah, yes, the top right, why? So the highest skill and mission critical. Okay, let's try another one. For problem solving, you chose lowest for skill level and nice to have for a perceived level of importance thinking one to three years down the line. Where do you think problem solving should be typed? Yes, that's right. The bottom left where the category states lowest skill and nice to have importance. So you will repeat this action, plotting all these points on the graph, putting the competencies in their respective nine boxes until all competencies are plotted in your nine box grid. All right, on to nine box analysis. Looks beautiful, right? You might be thinking, okay, well now what? <laughs> Take a few moments to recognize where each competency landed. Now that you have this sort of 3D way of thinking about where you want to grow, not just thinking about your current level of skill or your current perceived level of importance for that skill, but also thinking one to three years into the future. Really thinking to get where I wanna go one to three years from now, from this very moment, what do I need to stop, start, and continue tomorrow or soon? <laughs> do less of, more of, keep on doing what you're doing, etc. Let's start with the top right, that highest level of skill and mission critical on the perceived importance scale. You might want to choose one or two to highlight here because this is the area that you cannot lose sight. What's the translation? You perceive yourself as doing well here and the competency is of utmost importance. Keep doing what you are doing and begin to capitalize to strengthen even further. Did you have anything in your top left box? The lowest skill and mission critical box. If a competency shows up for you there, this is a great sign to prioritize your development on one or two of these. Let's say nothing fell into this category. 
let's say that you had some competencies show up in the top middle box, middle skill level and mission critical. This is another area to consider for prioritizing your skill building. Let's say you have a competency or two in the highest skill and nice to have box. If you have more than a few here, you could start thinking about closing the gap on alignment between the skills that you are bringing to the table and the appropriate level of importance for the role you have now or the role that you want in the future. Remember, what got us where we are is not always what we need to move forward. These are competencies you should keep mindful of, of course, and if you are leading projects or teams, you might consider delegating to other staff who are hoping to grow in those areas. Remember, you're highly skilled in this area, so you can coach or mentor someone else to develop. And since it's a nice to have versus a mission critical, if they make a mistake, it won't be the end of the world. Also remember the entire exercise is self-assessed. If you feel comfortable, you might use your nine box as a conversation starter with a trusted advisor or someone who is currently working in the job that you aspire to. Do they agree with your skill and importance assessment? What might they adjust and why? These are important developmental conversations that the nine box can open up and facilitate for you. Once you have finished your card sort, tallying, and nine box mapping, take some time in your development plan to reflect on and complete section three, plan. You will find instructions, helpful tips, and a framework for thinking through your nine box analysis at the intersection of the actions you hope to take. Speaking of that fourth and final stage, it's time for you to move on to stage four, finalizing, for now, your development plan and thinking through the coaching options that are available to you as an employee at UC Berkeley. So head on to stage four of the process. 